there, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about Vampire, which you can see here, but in this new Eureka Massive Cinema collection where you get the film, obviously on the disc, where you get some nice extras like um, a Kim, Kim Human talking to camera, Glimmer Del Toro commentary and um, Tony Reigns commentary and you've got this booklet with wonderful stuff. Uh, Solitary Ronin has already gone through the extras on his double take or his um, comparison of boutique labels or something, whatever he calls it. So I won't go into details about the pack. It's a very nice pack. I had a DVD of this and I was about to buy the Criterion American when this was announced. So I've, so I bought this instead. So um, it's wonderful. Now, Vampire is a Dreyer film, Carl Dreyer film, um, it's, it's a minor Dreyer film to be honest. I mean, this is, even though I'm a big horror fan, I don't consider um, Vampire to be anywhere near Dreyer's best. I mean, I don't think it's as good as The Passion of Joan of Arc. I don't think it's as good as Odette or Master of the House or Michael or that. I think it's one of his smaller films in his career, but it's such an influential film in a genre, in a way that the rest of his career almost feels like um, something like Gertrude or something, or massive chamber pieces that are masterworks of cinema, but they're all drear films, they're all part of a oeuvre that spans decades, and they're wonderful. I mean, the reason why I haven't done drear films generally is because they're so intimidating to try and talk about. So, um,. So, so the, that's why I haven't done them so far. I'm, I'm hoping to develop enough confidence to do them through this film. Um, but yeah, I really adore Dreyer films. They're, they're just wonderful. But um, Vampire is, is the one he made after he was, he, was, he was going through a tough period. And he got up and rested to rest in this film. He also stars as a lead. So this, this must be the uh, greatest vanity project ever where the financer is a lead and he actually isn't bad and he, he hired a genius director to write and direct a film. Which is the way you go if you're going to, be able to do a vanity project. Um, and it is a very good film and it's got a great atmosphere to it. But compared to other rare films it does feel minor. It is like a little short story within his oeuvre. Because it, it is fairly short, it's only about an hour, 10 or 15 minutes. And it, is, it does have a, a dream logic to it. Actually, it is one of those films, it does feel like it's operating on dream logic. It's like things go to A to B to C in a kind of weird, foggy way that... It does feel like the kind of weird logic you may have in your dreaming more than the way people would act in real life. And the fears feel like are done visually rather than... They have some um, logic to them and have some explanation and atmosphere given to them. But it's an atmosphere of something you would dream more than logic that you would actually have in real life. If that makes sense. It's, it, it does have a sense of people doing things that... And if you're doing a realistic film, people would go, wait, what? But it doesn't matter though, because Dreyer sets up the atmosphere so well that you know you're in a world that's not quite natural. And so you can, you can actually enjoy it, because it's almost like a dream's paranoid logic of people who you think may be helping you, may be hindering you. Family members who may be not out of the best for you, or maybe they are, and maybe you don't understand it. It's got a sense of the, the paranoia you may have in a dream about people around you who you know that may not be based on fact, but maybe based on feelings, that kind of floats through the film as well, and that's what makes it interesting. Because Dreyer's not that interesting in making a full-on horror film. He's much more interested in making an atmospheric film that does, as I said before, it does feel like a short story. It's based on uh, Sheridan Le Fanu's stories. I mean, uh, Le Fanu only won um, horror... Won vampire story which is Carmilla, the famous Carmilla story. There is a female vampire in this, but it doesn't, it's not very connected to Carmilla, really. It's just an atmosphere of these stories, I think he took and then he put his own story around them. And it's about a family who's infected with this disease that's infected them in an interesting way and is it realistic? Is it a 
Is it someone trying to poison them, or is it someone trying to? Um, is it someone supernatural? And it flows between both versions of what it could be reality, and it kind of comes down to both are legitimately menacing. <laughs> The way a dream could be where um, even how much ridiculous it feels, the emotional logic of it makes pushes you towards accepting it. That's why I feel it's very dream that's one of the most dreamlike films. It's more dreamlike than films set in dreams like, you know, um Inception. This feels much more like dream logic. This feels like the way you'd actually process things in a dream. Where it's not like someone coming after you with a knife or something, it's much more like that person's looking at me strange, does it mean something? You know, and it's that f the family issues that just flow to the surface and the kind of dream logic that are something menacing when they probably shouldn't be, and maybe just your subconscious finding things that aren't really there but that are real to you. It's that kind of feeling throughout the film. So it's a, it's a taste of protagonist, it's a protagonist that goes through the, the visits a place and he, and he suddenly comes into these weird supernatural elements like a ghostly figure appears to him and leaves him a book that's a physical book that's the first thing in my dream logic because um, he's asked them to protect his girls then the guy goes for the guy goes for a walk and he goes to this estate where this person actually lives and he's uh, deeply ill and he's going to die but even though he apparently came to ask me to look after his daughters. Then um, the book actually talks about vampires. And this guy's reading the book. And he's finding out about the vampires and the vampire lore by what he's reading. And slowly, even though, even though there's actual dialogue in this film, because it's, it's a sound film, there's so little of it that it may as well be a sound film. And so much was done through silent film techniques of reading and having the text up on the screen, you have to read it as you go, and then you go to the visual and back to the explanation again. So it's a a film with silent cinema logic to it. And it's it's also the fact that it's, as he tries to investigate, he sees that the Doctor might be not... Um, the, do the Doctor might be playing against the family... Like trying to poison the uh, daughter and trying to take advantage of her mental illness over her death of her father, who she thinks she may be a vampire because there's an old woman who suddenly appears to be sucking her blood at some point and disappears. And it's like, has it been infected? Was it a dream? And how is this guy connected, this lead character connected to them? Because it's a dream logic, but he's kind of a stranger. So is it his family, but he's distanced himself from it, or is it just a. Like what's going on? It, it, him in this story feels un, the most unnatural part of the story, but it makes it work like a dream logic because it's like the way someone who's a protagonist in a dream can look at other people, and you can be a distance from them, even if you may not be in real life. There's a sense of like, what's the actual connection here? It's just weird. So if it's a dream, like what's his connection? If it's not a dream, it's still kind of an odd figure in the narrative. So there's that going on in the film, this sense of nothing quite makes sense. And then when you see the vampires, it's a lot of a scene from a distance and it's like you're interpreting it. It's like, is that what I think it is or is it not? And then the the young woman who seems to be infected does start to look more malicious towards her family and as if she's infected with something. And basically the protagonist starting to fantasise about it dying. And um, he gets a lot of the logic of how to save people from a dream. We, we fantasize he's in a dream where he's actually been buried alive. But he finds out the doctor's up to no good. But it's a dream logic. But then we go in back to do the part reality. That dream logic still plays effect. Because the doctor is actually after them and he does manage to stop them. And they do manage to kill the vampire. But in a way with the vampire, just this old woman who's in a crypt and he just goes to through the heart and she turns to nothing. But at the same time, it doesn't isn't shot like it's a realistic thing at all. But it's not shot either as if it's a dream. It's just shot in a kind of weird way. They, 
a very soft diffusion in the imagery. There's shots of the guy with a big sky walking as well, as if it's death. Or then purgatory, or what's going on. Like, is the guy already dead? You never know. That's what's great about the film. It's also what is... We put people off, because it's not a film that was famous when it was released. It was a few that was about a failure from Dreyer, this big series director. And then it became much more known later as people started to see it. Oh, this is the other Dreyer film that no one's seen. And it became much more of a cult film and it's now viewed as a great masterpiece of, you know, European horror. But it still feels minor compared to Dreyer's other films. I mean, it's a wonderful little side project that I think has been... Because it's part of a, it's a being part of one genre, it's been elevated in some ways that the actual film might not be able to live up to because it is a little minor piece made by a director who's playing with a genre. He's he's not committing through to the genre. He's having fun with it. And it's obviously a film in between his more serious films, the films that he's really passionate about. He's playing around with this genre and playing around with this thing, and it's for his oeuvre, it's a minor film. But for horror, it's a major film. So it creates this weird disconnection in the film in the sense that if you view it, you're going to see a horror masterpiece. You're going to see, actually see something that's a bit art house and weird. If you're going to see it's a drear film, it's also a bit much of a horror film and a bit weird. So it's kind of in this a weird no man's land. Which just it perfectly because it's a dream logic film of vampires. It's like, it doesn't fit into anything entirely comfortably, which makes it interesting. And it is a very good film. But when I also just watched Nosferatu, I prefer Nosferatu to this one. I've always preferred Nosferatu to this one. Nosferatu feels more committed by the director to what he's doing and he seems to have a more clear view of what he wants to do with it. This one feels more playful. Like, the director's enjoying himself. But he could take a, he could take a leave of the logic of it all. He's just having fun in the dream logic and the vampire supernatural logic. It all kind of is, is meant to be kind of uh, overlapping and strange and he's not entirely taking it seriously. Especially compared to Nosferatu. But it's still a wonderful film. It just, for me, it's not like a major Dreyer film because I, I rate his other films much higher. And even some of his other films I think are much scarier than this. Like Odette or Gertrude, I think, are actually scarier films because of the human cruelty and human nature and human desire and how that gets corrupted and how tough life can be. Like, Rhea really goes into real horror in his other films in a way that he doesn't hear. I mean, Passion Drone of Arts is much more horrifying than this one. This is playful because Rhea knows how horrible life can actually be. So, just play with vampires, it's just a play thing for him in this film. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you to go and see Vampire. It's still a very good film. There's a lot of interesting things going on there. It's just, do not expect it to be top level Dreer. It's not. It's an enjoyable horror film. It's a nice early part of the genre. And it influenced a lot of people as they went on. It's been ripped off a lot. But it's, it's kind of minor in the director's career. But it's still a very enjoyable film. So, that's me for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be back soon. Oh.